Are we live yet? Looks like we're live. You love it? Hello. Hello. I know I can hear you, Evelyn, but I don't know if Jack can hear me. Hold on. The uncomfortable silence. There we go. So, today, I, I'm i following through on some of the threats that people have set, sent to me. Yes, I've deleted them. No, you cannot see them anymore. I'm glad I caught them in the first few minutes that they were posted. And they're threatening <laughs> to report my channel if Evelyn doesn't come back. So, I have Evelyn on the other line. Would you like to repeat that, please? I have been summoned by the people. Le people. Uh, so, <laughs> there she is. I'm going to be doing a live <clears throat> what if. So, everything that I say is part of a what if. This is going to be one shot. It's also a test for a new snowball I got. It's a blue snowball microphone that I brother-in-law graciously bought for me then i reimbursed him for dinner so <laughs> i feel like that's a fair trade a 60 dollar mic for a 50 dollar dinner yeah i feel like that's a fair trade <laughs> so <laughs> um if there's any hiccups in the audio uh evelyn will tell me because she's faster at telling me but hopefully you guys enjoy. I'm going to start the story right about now. I can turn that off real quick. Turn that on. Turn that off. Oh. No, I like my face peeking through. It's freaking creepy. Okay. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> don't judge me, Evelyn. I hear the judging tone. I hear the judging tone. Don't judge me. Until after the stream, please. <laughs> true. That is true. You do judge me 24-7. Well, since they can't hear you, I'm going to start the story. We start off our story uh, on the first few quirks that were started. This woman, as you can see in the right picture... This woman, she is born different. Most people are either quirked or non-quirked. They don't have mutations yet. She's one of the first mutation, mutation quirks. And since she's part of the first generation, she has her pinky toe. And she has a very powerful quirk. One of her best friends... All for one. Yes, all for one is one of her friends. And the very first user of One for All was her friend, too. And if this sounds familiar to the Crunchy Fet story, I did take a little inspiration from him. I'm not having the exact same quirk, even though, yes, it has the same uh, kind of flow to it. No, it is not the same quirk. And no, I'm not continuing on his story. His story, yes, I, I've i listened to it. Great story. I feel like he's losing his touch, but that's my opinion. Because of all the fantasy stories he's done. He used to be able to do really good stories with quirks. But that's just me. And, yo, Fett, if you're listening to this, keep doing what you're doing. Don't... Don't have people stop you. If you like where you're going with your channel, continue going there. But I feel like you lost your touch, so I'm still going to be subscribed because, duh, why wouldn't I follow you? You're a good YouTuber. But I'm going to slow down on watching your videos, probably rewatch some of your old stuff. Your good stuff, in my opinion. So, uh, <laughs> no offense, dude, but I feel like you're losing your touch. 
I know this is going to be shared to him because of that little speech, but this is mainly a test for my microphone and setting this up. So if you guys would like to for me to find a way to adjust stuff for my a volume or me just in general want me to either slow down or speed up i will have evelyn if she's willing to go onto the stream and just look at the chat every once in a while to see if i need to slow down or speed up and thank you evelyn for doing that normally i would have sis here but she's currently doing other projects Uh, I wasn't planning on actually doing this with anybody. I'm glad that Evelyn volunteered for this. And I'll have her talk now about her thoughts of coming back. Coming back to the streams. Yeah, alright, yeah. I just like doing fun stuff. Fantasy stuff, like imagination. I guess so you like hanging like out with me? Back. Yeah, no, I don't like hanging out Damn. with you. I just like the fantasy. Did I hurt your feelings? No, I already kind of thought of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, and it's like a, a way to de-stress because I just moved to another state, so. Yeah, uh, you moved from California to Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Even Texas gets swallowed by Texas. <laughs> oh my god. Have you seen those memes? Uh, no, no, I have not. You well, haven't I mean, seen I've the seen world some. fit inside Texas before meme? It's literally a map of the world I'm inside Biden. Texas. Alright, that, that's... That's legit. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> but let's get back on topic. I'm going to mute you from the stream till a little later right. when your character comes into play. And yes, she's a character in the story. Would you like to tell them a little bit about yourself for your character, like your quirk? And... No, I'll let you do that. Okay. Well, my quirk is called The Contract. And my character's vigilante name, because she's not a anti-hero, she's not a hero and she's not a villain, she's a vigilante, so she works for both sides. She's called The Contractor. And no one knows how to get in touch with The Contractor. She gets in touch with you, because she has two friends. She has the Augur, and if you guys know the Augur of Dunlane from Skyrim, good for you, you know a little bit more lore than most people. And that's how she gets in contact with people. And then we have her little sister that she'll find later, as in Evelyn. And I say little sister because she's been alone for her entire life. Except for her two friends, as she considered brothers. And I may get a message from a certain YouTuber, Shiro Senpai. I really do not like saying that name, but it, it's the correct name. I may get a message from Shiro about something special for this one, for this what if. So if she messages me, I'll pick it up and I'll see what it is. But if it isn't her, I'm not gonna pick it up. So, but it's currently four o'clock in the morning for her. Well, 4.30. Yeah, there's a five-hour difference between me and her. So, yeah. And there's a seven-hour difference between her and Evelyn. So, <laughs> you won't be able to find her just by the time zones. Well, you may be able to if you search hard enough. So, <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoy. And let's continue the story. So, after... One for All and All for One are created, and it gets passed down. It's been a few years, well, more like 
200. And Nana Shimura finally gets it. I know that's not really the timeline. I'm just extending the timeline out to where UA is going to be happening over multiple years. Nana Shimura gets one for all. And someone approaches her and asks to have a conversation. And this is in a big office building. Nana Shimura was volunteering as a sidekick to build up her reputation and become the number one hero that she was before All Might. Okay. I'm sorry. I yawn when I'm sitting down. I normally am doing what ifs walking in my backyard, so that's why I yawn sometimes. So, she sees this girl, and this girl looks professional. She's in a suit, the suit that you see on the left. But she has a pipe, and she looks kind of like what's on the right. And she opens up a door to this office that Nanashimura never knew was there, which isn't actually there. And she guides Nana in, and Nana's a little naive. And one of the passerby pro heroes notices that that's the contractor. So he shuts up and continues walking, because if he confronts her, He's going to get his ass whooped like the last time he did. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you his name now. Gran Torino. So, Nana walks in and the contractor walks into her office and her sexy appeal changes to that of seductive. Her sexy appeal and her right change to that of seductive appeal for the left. She gets the tail, she gets the horns, and her eye color does change. And her hair color. Pretty much everything to where she looks like that. Without the fork. That's actually a quill in her hand. <clears throat> Nana sat down and she sat across from her and she goes, Okay, I have a proposition for you. And Nana finally notices who she's talking to. And she's trying not to freak out because she knows that if she starts freaking out, she'll be sent out and may not be able to get any information out of the contractor. Because the contractor doesn't have uh, uh, client an an anonymity. And then, what is the word, Evelyn? The person can't talk about the things because the client signed a contract what what is that oh um shoot why am i forgetting that now it's uh discretion discretion that's it yeah yeah so it's discretion she doesn't have to be discreet about what she discusses with other clients so Izumi, and no one knows her last name, not even herself, because she was an orphan. She walks around to the table and sits on the table right next to Nana and seductively suggests that Nana signs a contract to fix the quirk. And Nana's completely confused because she's already gotten the quirk. And yes, I'm going to make it to where that they get the quirk before they become true heroes, unlike Mo's, which most became heroes and then got the quirk and then became true heroes. Which I think that's how it worked. I may have gotten it during training. Eh. I don't know that much of All for One's history. No one does. Oh, crap. So, she says, I'll draft up a contract and she flicks her hand out and this parchment rolls open that she had in her hand. It rolls open, and it while it's rolling open, words get scribbled on the page. And she hands it to Nana, and it already has her signature on it as the contractor, not her actual name. 
and Nana reads through it and sees all the faults of one for all. And she sees that it will be fixed forever. That's if Nana gives up part of her life in compensation. And as a little fine print, it says, we'll add in some details of some villains that have been, have had work for, have had work done by the contractor. And Nana asks how much information in the, and she says, that depends on how much life you're willing to give. And at this time, Izumi has been alive for 200 years. And she knows exactly where All for One is. And All for One made her sign a, sign a contract that says, you're not to tell of my location, nor are you able to write a contract that says you can say my location or give out any information. And he added that to his contract with her to leave him alone. No contracts can act, actively go against him or harm him in any way. And he gave up part of his power to his brother. That was the contract. Because his brother wanted power and Izumi felt pity for him. So, we're now back in the present time. And Nana goes, okay, all for one. And Izumi immediately snaps her fingers and the information part of the contract disappears. And she goes, sorry, that's information I can't give out. And she starts to walk away to put the parchment back. And she goes, fine, I won't ask for all for one. Any other villain, major villain, that has had contracts with you in the past, can we have information on them? And she goes, how much life? And Nana goes, give me 10 years to find a successor for, for this, and I will, will give you the rest of my life. Ten years later, because she signed the contract, we go to Toshinori Yagi, seeing the final fight between All for One and One for All. They're clashing with Nana Shimura. Nana has already given Toshinori the quirk, and Toshinori has... What quirk? tired. I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning at my place, so I'm a little tired. <sighs> anyway, Toshinori has uh, gotten the quirk, and he's heard that there's a condition to make it work properly, and that's make the quirk his own. And Nana says that she wasn't able to meet this condition because she has very limited time from a side effect of the quirk when it's not really a side effect of the quirk. It was a contract that she made with Izumi. And she didn't tell Toshinori about the contract nor about how one or all for one or one for all worked in the past. Because she's like, okay, new generation, new quirks, this needs to continue to grow more powerful, and this will continue to get more powerful as the years go by. And all the past users are still infused with the quirk, but they couldn't add to the power until Nana Shimura signed the contract. So Nana basically changed all for one or one for all into what it is canon timeline. So she dies in that confrontation with all for one. 
And then the contractor shows up and says, well, I didn't think this is how it would end for her. Meh. And all for one goes, oh, hey, uh, I'll draft up a contract. Just take me to somewhere safe. And she goes, um, yeah, no. Your contract ends in two minutes. I'm not doing that. And he goes, why? And she goes, eh, you've been a thorn in my side. We used to be friends for the first hundred years. And there's a specific person that's hearing this conversation. It's Toshinori Yagi. And a five-year-old girl. And yes, it's going to be a time skip. Ten years where uh, <laughs> Deku is found. Hey, no. Not a five-year-old girl. Actually, yeah, five-year-old girl. So, this is going to be interesting. Oh, Evelyn, I know you're still listening. Uh, what did you want to be? I'm waiting for her to answer. Villain, hero, or vigilante? Why did I think she were going to be vigilante already? So I know what she's going to be. You guys don't know yet. So that will be a surprise for you guys. We go to little girl's perspective. That's the little girl. She's hearing this conversation and she's still freaking out because this building is falling on top of her. So she tries to run out. The door shuts. She can't open it. Because it's blocked by rocks. And. I need some water. Evelyn entertained them for a second. What? Who? Who? Okay. I don't know how to entertain. But. <laughs> the. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> that was a good day. Anyways, we had this, uh, class together, math class, and he sits in front of me. Business financing. Business finance. And that teacher always just counted on me to keep him in control. So that. He said that after the first day. That it was the second day that he's like, yeah, I need you to t k uh, take control of him. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I got to stab him in the back with pens. I didn't. That's I where didn't my fear of pens come from. I didn't do too much harm, you know? Like, I, I apparently created nightmares for him because he has nightmares with me now. Of sealing so doors. Know. How the hell did doors come from pens? I don't know. It's your dreams. Well, I'm back. I, I got some water. Came from. I don't know where they came from either. Oh, I, re yeah, and you I remember I used to have an <laughs> Evelyn sense. Yep. And that's as weird as it sounds. I used to be able to tell just by the sense of dread I get when Evelyn was on campus. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would come up in my car, I'd park, and I would round the corner, and by that time he would stick his head out and look directly at me like he knew I was there. <laughs> no I'm like, text, hello! No I still don't know how he did it. I told you, it's a sense of dread I get. 
That is true. Now you'll be able to send it when I go. When you what? Enter California. No, it wore off once you left California. It's like, Ellen's not coming back! Then he came back. Yeah, yeah. Surprise visits, man. Yeah, you... You visit it, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm free on the only day I have have for work. (laughs) Yep. Still can't believe you're like, oh yeah, I'm visiting, and the only day you have free is your work day. Damn it! Yep. <laughs> so let's get back to the story. I had my water. Um. So this little girl is trapped, and all of a sudden, the door opens. Inward instead of outward like it normally does. And this big office is there. And all of a sudden, a girl appears in front of the door and goes, Why don't you walk into my office? And so she does. And she's a little scared because she was told not to talk to strangers. But it was the only way out of a crumbling building. And this girl walks over to her seat, sits down, and changes back to normal. The contractor is now in her normal state, not her dealing state. And she goes, I have a deal for you. I'll give you a good life if you become my sister. Hi. Supposed to sound nervous. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Don't worry. Just sit down. Everything will be made clear. Oh, uh, okay. As you sit down in the chair, a piece of paper appears in my hand and so does a quill. A piece of paper rolls out and it shows the terms and conditions and then what you have to pay. What the hell are you doing? Evelyn, what are you doing? What? I hear that. I am not doing anything. What the hell are you doing there? I am sitting. Your microphone must be really sensitive with the chair. Probably is. That's going to get really annoying. Oh, crap. I need to check my. You're getting off topic. I know, I know, I know. Okay. So, as you sit down, I flick out the piece of paper. It shows the price you have to pay of being sister. And then it shows what you gain. And it says, knowledge, safe place, and someone who cares for you. It's a one-sided deal. But you don't understand that. Because you're only five. Yeah, what five-year-old would understand a contract like that? You and me! Okay. Duh! 
we would both understand a contract like that. So, I just say, all you have to do is a little prick and then draw something here. Or pick up the quill. Draw. And I hand you the, the quill. And I go, yeah, draw or just use this. And everything will be set. Okay. So I hand her the quill, and the quill just takes right over and initials, and then she, she starts drawing. All of a sudden, she gets a flush, a flood of ideas and memories of something that she hasn't done yet, which is use her quirk. She was told that her quirk was very, very, very dangerous, so she never wanted to use it. And then she sees how useful her quirk is and ways for her to use it without hurting people. And after that, she immediately passes out from the flood of information. Headache. We go... Five minutes later, after Izumi has picked her up and taken her to her new room and walked back into her office and picked up the contract that she just made. And she flipped it over and read the back in the fine print, and it said, adds 40 years of life to her. And... She's like, yes. I can continue doing this. So, we skip. Toshinori is roughly 18. He's 44 in the show. Tw 26 years. You still haven't changed your size. You're still the little pipsqueak that you were 26 years ago. But you've mentally matured. You have gained a skill from gained a skill called trickster. It allows you to become the person that you're not. But the downside is if you're in that state too long, you actually think that's your original state and you lose yourself, your sense of self. OBS crash? No, OBS did not crash. Okay. Well, I don't care about the image. God. The stream's cutting out, in and out. Oh. Okay. So I may have to end it and then restart it. I have to restart the stream. Which is gonna freaking suck. Okay. So, currently it's not shut down. The stream is not cut off, so let's hope it doesn't and continue on. Okay. So, we skip the 26 years. You constantly use Trickster to make yourself seem younger than you actually are. But, you also use Trickster to make yourself seem older. So you constantly go back and forth between your actual age and your stature's age. Uh -huh. 
you are a vigilante like me, but I just make contracts. You're my muscle. You're very violent when it comes to me because you vigorously want to protect me from being hurt. And you're normally at the door when people want to have a contract with me but don't know where I am. Or when I see a opportunity to have a contract with someone, you're normally the person at the door greeting them in while I sit on my velvet throne behind my desk. And I only say velvet throne because it's a chair that has velvet on the background. If you guys can see that little desk in the top right of the demon picture, that's pretty much what the desk looks like, but it's not quite that broom. So, we go to uh, Toshinori Yaki. He runs into a little kid. And yes, Deku's going to be a thing in this world. And Toshinori says, I see a hero in you. All of a sudden, a woman walks out of the shadow and goes, Yeah, there's no hero in that kid. And he goes, Who the hell are you? And she goes, I'm the contract. And all of a sudden, all my buffs up and is about to fight when he gets stopped by a wave of wind. And he goes, oh, crap, I forgot about that. And he uses his fist to counteract the pre the wind pressure, but it's not enough. So he ranks up the power, and I just grab his fist with my bare hand and he goes, uh-uh-uh, you're ruining this town then. He goes, yeah, crap. Too many civilians. I walk up to the little kid and go, shoo, run off, run off. Oh, and before you can, or if I will even let you, you gotta sign a contract. I roll out a contract, and I look like, like the devil version. I rolled out a contract, and he's so frightened that I just put the quill in his hand and immediately write, and it immediately writes for him. Because all he wanted to do was leave this situation. So I forgot who All Might was for a good 30 minutes and that interaction that All Might just had with him. Because that wasn't Deku. That was just a random extra. By the way, that was also Corpus. And... I walk up to All Might and bitch slap him. Super, super hard. I just backhand him really hard. And all of a sudden you hear laughter. Evelyn, that's you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I look at the little sister that I've had for... 26 years, and I go, Oi, want me to bitch slap you too? Tomorrow will be 27 years. No, I don't want to be slapped. Okay. And don't mess with all my... That's my job. Okay, I'll back off. I'll back off. Good. Now, I look at all my and go, Okay, that wound on your side... I'll heal it if you give me some of your life. And he goes, what? And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I deal in lifespan. I deal in souls. I can deal in whatever I want. Because this parchment is the only quirk I have. But the past this parchment is not my quirk anymore. Or it is, but I just never noticed. Although I'm about to send you some. There we go. 
There you go. So, All Might sees, reads through the contract, and he buffs down, and he almost coughs up blood on it. But, for some reason, the parchment doesn't allow his blood to stay, and it just seeps through. He's like, what? And he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, normally, these are blood contracts, but with you, I kind of made it blood resistant. So you're going to have to use the ink blood combo that's currently in the quill. And you just coughed under the quill, by the way. And he goes, uh, crap. He goes, don't worry. I'm not going to force you to sign it like that, little kid. That means you're a secret safe with me, for now. I'm going to put this entire conversation on blast once you sign the contract, though. This entire conversation about you being a weak, soggy french fry looking ass. And he goes, what? She says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put on blast that All Might looked like a soggy french fry at one point in time. Then he got healed. To every single hero, villain, civilian, vigilante. Yeah, that's going to be freaking hilarious. Anyways, um, I'll give you another year of my life if you don't do that. She goes, Make it two. She goes, yeah, I'm not willing to do that. She goes, fine, I'll give you ten years to train your uh, student. I'm going to die, too. And he goes, what? And she goes, nothing. Nothing. And he goes, okay. And she goes, also, by the way, your student's still at school. Getting his ass beat by a bully. He goes, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait. Watch. He signs the contract. And she goes, okay. Tonight your wound will be healed. And he goes, what? She goes, yeah. About that. Takes at least five hours to fully take effect. He goes, okay. Okay, then. Oh, and by the way, I took the lifespan from Toshinori Yagi, not All Might. Because All Might's going to die in two years. Anyway. She goes, yeah, um, see ya, and just disappears. Ten months later, I'm currently arguing with the little friend, our little sister, which we still haven't come up with a name for. I am nameless. Well, you are the trickster, so kind of have no name. You are all names and no names at the same time. <laughs> so you... Oh, by the way, did you see the picture? On your phone. Did you see the picture? Yeah. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, I'm currently arguing with... And I'm just going to call you Evelyn in the story. Evelyn. To go to UA. And she keeps yelling at me because she doesn't want to go. Because she's in her childish state. Her bipolar personality is coming out. And she continues to yell at me of... She doesn't want to go. She doesn't have to go. And I'm just being mean by forcing her to go. And I say, I am being mean. And I am forcing you to go. For your own benefit. You go to UA. Or I'll kick you out for a week. Like I have in the past. It's just... That's your kill. But why? Why do I have to go? Why is it a benefit? Well, remember that guy that I told you that I gave the ability of foresight to for being stuck to be 
my bodyguard for, no, not my bodyguard, well, my prophet for all the, the rest of my life. Yeah. Never well, mind. he said that there's something going to happen at UA, and I want to be there when it does. And remember that one contract that says if you're ever in danger or you feel like there's going to be a dangerous situation that I'll need to be there for, I can teleport to you? Yeah. There you go. <sighs> Fine. Okay, so the exam is in 10 months. You don't need to train because you're already more powerful than goddamn Endeavor and All Might combined. Well, actually, not Endeavor because he can just fuels fire with your wind. But, <laughs> that would also overheat him quicker. But, you want to make another contract? What kind of contract? Another lifelong, uh, longing contract. Which means you get more life. Okay. You can already live up to 200 years old, but... I'm listening. It's just same old, same old. You get more life. I lose life. But you also... Have to stay with me another year. Okay. There you go. I hand you a parchment with the quill and and your special ink that you've used multiple times. You sign it. I go, yay! And I run into my office, shut the door. There you go. Okay. I'm sorry, but it's just got to happen. And I fully extend the parchment to show the fine print that says, Trickster will be locked, and your original personality from 26 years ago will come out. So you're going to act like you're close to five years old, but you're still going to have the abilities... Uh, of a 31-year-old. And the knowledge of a teenager. Okay. So, I just sit back and I watch it from the sidelines because I can kind of do that. You go to the exams. You pass the exams with flying colors. It's the first day of school, and you see exactly who Toshinori Yagi chose for his successor. You start becoming friends with everybody. You're the childish girl in class, and you're very, very, very protective of me, your sister. And your stature. And size. Stature and size are different, by the way, for those viewers who don't know. <laughs> Aizawa feels a strange sense of familiarity with you. And then he's like, okay, everybody out to the training field. Everybody goes out to the training field. You get the highest in class because when you're slowest in class because you never use your quirk for that. You fly normally. Your strength, the weakest. Just your stamina without using your quirk is just absolute trash. Because you signed a contract that says you can use your quirk infinitely for 20 years of your life. That's why you're not able to live to 220, you're just able to live to 200. And now you can live to 240. Oh, crap. So, we go to me. 
I'm sitting and watching. And all of a sudden, I feel sluggish and weak, and I look down, and I see my hand is changing into that of an elderly person. And I'm like, crap. I used up all my ears. I need to go make a contract quickly. And I teleport out, and I have my gloves on. I have gloves on, and I'm just walking around in my normal form, the femme fatale form that's on the right. And I get people's attention. I start making contracts left and right for years of their life for, like, curing them of illnesses, increasing the strength of their quirk, just small things that will improve either their lives or or any or whatnot. And in the few hours that Evelyn is gone, I rack up a thousand years for my life because I either cut someone's life short or or so on. And I did that all day. Evelyn gets back to the house where her and I hide out in, and I'm not there. So Evelyn goes upon her day. I arrive, and finally the effects of the first contract that I signed for her lifespan take effect, and my hand reverts back to when I was younger. I go, oh god, that was, I thought I was about to die there. And Evelyn heard that and walks up and goes, what? Hmm? What did you say? N- nothing. Um, did you make dinner? I, no. I was. You want takeout? I, I'd go for takeout, yeah. Burgers, sushi, ramen. Ooh, ramen. As long as you don't act like Naruto. Oh, man. That means only five bowls, not 15. Fine. Okay, let's go. They go to this ramen shop that is conveniently named Ichiraku. (laughs) And we skip to the next week. (laughs) If you guys know what Ichiraku Ramen is a reference to, then you've actually watched Naruto. If you didn't know what Ichiraku was a reference to, just listen back to the conversation just a few seconds ago. So, the next week... Evelyn puts a wind force field on the door when she walks in, because she's always the last one in the classroom. Because there's going to be a noisy person running in. All of a sudden, they hear a shatter of glass, and Evelyn starts laughing her ass off. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking creepy, though. She's so creepy. Why was I all creepier than the rest of them? <laughs> like, no joke! That was really freaking creepy! That was creepier than the ones you did at school! Well, I'm what glad I hell? cared about you. I'll be right back. I'm about to fall asleep, so I need to walk up, get up and walk around. So, Evelyn... You know what to do. Tell them a random story <laughs> about me. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Okay, I must tell you guys the story of the salad. We're at, at, we're at one. I mean, like a semi like bad circle. And he just opens up. I am telling him, yes, I'm telling the salad story. He opens up his food container and says salad. And right as soon as he goes 
to like get a fight, the fire alarm just goes off. And this happened like multiple times. And it was multiple salads he had at the same time as he opened it and went for a bite. The fire alarm would just go off. So it, it's just the salad causes fire alarms. And we would have to like pack up our lunch and like exit, all that. But yeah, yeah. salad start fire alarms. It's not fire, guys, it's salad. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it, if any of us ever, the other people of our group, if they any brought salad, no, no fire alarm. It was just, it was just his salad. It was just his salad, so his salad starts fire alarms. Okay, I'm fully awake. I took a walk around my room. Uh yeah, I don't know why, but every time I opened a salad in friggin' uh, junior year, fire alarm just go off. Yeah, no, no, no rhyme or reason, just open the salad, fire alarm, and it was always his salad. Every time I heard the last click, it would be, click, eh, 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 eh. Like, what the hell? I know, yeah. Anyways, let's get back on the story. <laughs> so you get to you get to have a few stories from my high school years. <laughs> so you get to have some entertainment while I'm not here instead of just complete silence. Oh god. Um, where was I? Okay, so yeah, all my get was sent through the window in Nezu's office. I'm like, goes, oh, crap, I'm late. So he runs up to Nezu and goes, um, I'm a little late, sorry. And he goes, it's fine. I just get to class. And he goes, yes, sir. And he starts running to class, and there's a smoke trail, because obviously anime, there's got to be a smoke trail for when people go fast. Nezu's like, oh, God. And then he hears a... Boom from a sonic boom that a jet engine, a jet would make if they broke the sound barrier. And that was because this wind was so pressurized that if it gets touched, it will break the sound barrier. The only people's not affected are on the other side of the barrier. And that was class 1A. So, class 2A, 3A. All the rest of the classes were all deafened by that sonic boom because it was really close to them. Except for class 1A. They went running out of the room with Evelyn still laughing in the corner. <laughs> and oh. Izala looks at her and goes, What did you do? <laughs> do you really want to know? He goes, Maybe. I don't think you want to know. He goes, mm. are you part cat? Because you got fluffy ears. Uh, no, I am part fox. Eh, close enough. I like dogs, too. But, no. I don't need to know. Good. You don't need to know. And he throws a uh, paper throwing star at you, which stops right on your desk. You open it up, it says... You're my favorite student now. <laughs> All Might jumps back through the window and he's bleeding from his head. He's like, Ow! I am here! That really hurt! And he walks in class and he sees the little girl laughing in the background. He's like, Ah, oh, crap. Um, um, um. Well... It's Hero Training Day. Get out to Training Ground Beta. And he runs off. Sweating bullets and bleeding profusely. He runs to Recovery Girl. Recovery Girl heals him. He runs to Power Loader. And Power Loader's like, 
what happened? And he goes, uh, Quirk went out of control, was sent through a window. Half the wall is gone now. And he goes, what the frick happened? And he goes, well, half the wall is actually gone. And they, and they go, what, what? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta get to class, so you, I don't know the world's fine of fantasy, so I can't do it. But he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you got this. And he runs off, run into a training ground beta. And, and while he's running, he puts on his Golden Age costume. Because he was late, so he had to do it on the run. He pulls a Superman and, gra- and grabs the phone booth. <laughs> so, at training ground beta... There is one particular person who isn't with them. Because she hates being in a large crowd outside. So she's flying in the air. She's like, yeah. I'm still here. But I don't want to be here. So All Might shows up. He sees where she is and he goes, okay. Whew. And the entire time... There is one particular girl laughing her ass off because it's like a comedy show with All Might. And she can't stop laughing. And she <laughs> shows up in Nezzy's office and she goes, okay, I want to be a teacher. And Nezzy goes, what? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Live for two, three, maybe, I don't know. Hundred years. Hundred. I've lived for a few centuries. He goes, uh, you, you want to be a teacher? She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a contractor. And his eyes widen and go, what? She goes, yeah. Uh, let me be a teacher. Class 1A. And he goes, uh, uh, okay. And she goes, don't worry, I have a contract all written up. And she shows him the contract. He reads through it and he goes, it's very tempting. And she goes, don't worry. It's for the next thousand years. And he goes, what? She goes, don't worry. I can't hurt any of your students, nor can I make a contract with any of them until after they've graduated. And plus, the next thousand years is a really long time, so I can keep track of, of what happens. And it'll keep me on the good side for a thousand years instead of doing any evil stuff. Which means all the information on the evil people will immediately show up in a flash drive on your desk within five hours. Is okay then. And he reads what he has to pay for it. And it says one dollar a day. And he could save a puppy near you. No. <laughs> I freaking hate the SC, uh, the uh, SCPA commercials. One dollar a day, and you could save a puppy near you. Yeah, no, that ain't going to puppies. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that ain't going to puppies. That's going to some greedy guy's wallet. Is that the truth? I'm out of water. Damn it. I'll be right back. I need to go get some water. Let's say another story. Okay, okay, I have to God. think about this, but it's an embarrassing one. Um, hmm. <laughs> you better not say the tic-tac-toe story. Oh my god, yes, thank you. <laughs> I have the story. <laughs> okay, so, so him and I are in a group in government class. And our our teacher's kind of our teacher's like given a lecture, and we're we're both like semi listening, or at least I was. Anyways, I don't know about him, 
but also he like he gets I was like, too. Okay, okay, you were listening. Okay, I'll add that. And he has his forearm on the desk, and he gets my attention, and he draws on his arm, like, just, not in ink or anything, just so, like, it shows up when you, like, scratch your skin, like, that little red line that comes up afterwards. Yeah, he did that. He did that in a tic-tac-toe shape. And got my attention, and we were playing tic-tac-toe, like, multiple, multiple games on his arm. And our government teacher finally noticed. And he looks and he asks us if we're playing tic tac toe. And we're like, yeah. And he asks who's winning. Like, no, like, real lecture of, like, why aren't you paying attention or anything? It's just who's winning. And so that, that was. Embarrassing, but also really, really funny. Just because we we didn't really get in trouble for just playing tic tac toe in the middle of class. Oh, we got in trouble. We got a talking to, but that's it. Oh God. I don't even want to get started with Germanos. <laughs> God. So we're back on topic. So all of a sudden, Midnight gets a message saying, she's not teaching class anymore. It's going to be someone else. So Izumi walks into the classroom, and she picks up Aizawa and goes, you're not allowed in here for when they get back. He goes, what? And she goes, yeah. I'm next teacher. And he goes, but midnight. And he goes, I know your wife, but not anymore. And he goes, what? She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know your name. I know your hero name. I know your quirk. I know its limitations. And by the way, it doesn't work on me. So, Aizawa gets freaked out because... She knows everything about him. Just don't worry, don't worry. I signed a contract. He hears that and she, he goes, oh, crap. He goes, oh, well. You're bound by your contracts. She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, can you please get out? Because I'm about to start teaching class when they get back. And he goes, sure thing. And he walks out of the room. All of a sudden... The podium changes into a old, vintage, English-style mob boss desk. Yes, I had to add the mob boss desk. Mob boss part. A quill and parchment appear on the desk. And the throne appears. And she goes, this is comfortable. She sits down, crosses her legs, and waits. And she just sits there, waiting. After the heroes versus villains, because that's all the focus, they all walk back to class after getting changed, and she goes, okay, everybody, there's one thing you must do. Make a contract. And this is the only contract you'll ever have to sign. They all look at her and go, who the hell are you? And she goes, I'm the contractor. And everybody has a, a quill on their desk and a parchment on their desk. Read it thoroughly. Because if you don't, I'm going to force you to read it and then sign it. And they all look at it and start reading it. And it, shows, and it says that they will never smell again. They'll never have to bathe again. If they sign this contract. They'll never have an unpleasant smell about them ever again. If they sign this contract. And the only thing that it's required is for them 
to have one hour of sleep at the least a day. They all look at her and they go, oh, uh, what? And she goes, yeah, um, yo, dumb Pikachu. And he goes, my name isn't Pikachu. And she goes, I don't care what your name is. What I care about is how dumb you get. Read yours a little harder. And yo, pervert. And he stops staring. He was like, oh, what? It's just, by the way, there's a clause in there that says, if you stare at me like that again, you're going to get a static shock. And the entire time, Evelyn is laughing in the background, maniacally. And that's a no for the laughing maniacally in the background. Well, she's laughing maniacally. And all of a sudden, everybody starts signing. Mineta, Mineta is very hesitant. And she goes, if you don't sign, I'm expelling you. Or I'll force you to sign. And the entire time, Aizawa is out in the hall just listening. And Midnight walks by to check up on the students. And he goes, don't go in there. And she goes, but why? And he goes, well, if you go in there, you're probably going to be sent flying. Like All Might did. And she goes, why? And he picks up a rock and throws it at the barrier. And it passes through the barrier with a ripple effect. And she goes, what? And he goes, yeah. Anything bigger than maybe an inch wide breaks the barrier. So, and you can't barely hear anything out of it, so just wait. <laughs> Are you even there, Evelyn? Hello? Hmm. Hold on. My Discord cut out. Stream still going. Hello. Evelyn. Can you hear me? Hello, Evelyn. Hello. Can you guys hear her? Hello? Hello? I can't hear you. I know you guys can still hear me. Okay, so...
Hello. Hello. Hmm. Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to try to fix this audio. Oh god. What stories is she going to make? I'm going to try to get it to where you guys can hear her again. I know you guys can hear me because I can see the audio coming through. Is it my headphones? I know you guys can still hear No, it isn't my headphones. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Ha. Huh. Hello. I'm going to be reloading Discord while trying to fix the problem with Evelyn. Um, oh, yeah. Gaming streams are coming back next weekend. By the way, next weekend I'm going to try to start gaming streams up again. But it's football season, so I'm going to probably be also re working really hard at work. At my physical job. So, um... Okay. So I'm going to try to get that done. Uh start working on game streams again cuz I like game streams with you guys. Hello. Damn, Discord's not working. Oh, Discord crapped out.
So it looks like we can't continue having Evelyn here. Damn. What the hell? That's such a mood. Evelyn, you have such a mood for... Um, your rude status. I came, I saw, I forgot. Not such a mood. But, no more embarrassing stories. Sorry! Not sorry. Um, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Um, how do I get my brother in law in here? That would be that would be fun. But you guys would like him. I think you would like him. Who knows? You may. I could have a family stream once. My other family members that want to be here. Ooh, you guys should leave in the. Uh, you should. Uh, you guys should leave in the comments of when this becomes a video. If I should have a family stream where the where my family members will become. Will become part of the stream. You guys should leave in the comments after this becomes a video. Because that would be kind of fun. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Yeah. Everybody signs the contracts. They finish up the school day. Um, Izumi opens up a door to her office. Both Evelyn and Izumi walk through. I'm not going to be bringing in Evelyn because she's not here, so I can't kind of have her do like little things like laugh and respond. So Izumi gets notified by what the hell? Oh. I pressed the wrong button. It turned on a call. Well, if you could hear me, that'd be great. Can you hear me? Question mark? I don't know, but if she can, well, doesn't show that it's picking me up. I know this is going to be weird. Can you hear me now? Hopefully. Hopefully that didn't just jack up my audio. Did it jack up my audio? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, well... Looks like the streaming setup's going to crap. 
But I'm glad my microphone works. Me schnubel. Me schnubel. Um, I'm going to end it here. Sorry. I wanted to go later, but I got some stuff to do because my parents are coming home. And I'm going to have to fix Discord. So, yeah. You guys enjoyed so far? If you guys did, please consider leaving a like. If you guys didn't, oh well. Uh, look for the Crunchy Fet. Uh, Ravenclaw. The crew. Um, any other whatifers? Because they have a lot better content than me, in my personal opinion. So, if you like them, consider subscribing to them. But if you like me, consider subscribing to me to keep stay, to stay up to date with my content, which currently is very sporadic. But consider uh, clicking that bell no bell icon to stay notified. And stay smooth, you